So it has all come down to this. All I've done, all I've been through, it has all led to me covering a fictional story about made up characters having a sleepover. With pillow fights. I'm telling you now, this is the weirdest Digimon crossover I've ever seen. So, you know how at the beginning of the KDA video I told you it would be the weirdest video yet? That's right, forget it, because today you will learn about a story purely inspired by, as the name suggests, onesies. Now, the topic of onesies, or as some would have it, Kigurumi, is very sensitive for me. Why do they exist? Why do people buy them? Why do I own three of them? No, more importantly, why isn't Riot selling more of them? We have Tibers, Earth, Cancer, and then they actually release champions with onesies, but Riot doesn't actually sell their onesies. It drives me mad! But let's get back to the story. Just like all the other Star Guardian stories, this one was also written by Ariel Lawrence. And since every past Star Guardian story was really good, by which I mean both of them, you know this one will be special too. And as a reminder, these stories continue one bigger storyline, so every now and then you may miss a reference to the previous stories if you haven't read them yet. And I highly recommend reading them yourselves even though they tend to be a little bit longer. But without further ado, let's jump into this TLDR version of the Pajama Guardian story. As always, the story is told from Lux's point of view. She is always the main character. This time she called everyone, including the second team, for a mandatory Star Guardian Council meeting. But it didn't go as planned. Everyone was supposed to arrive at her house and enjoy a big Star Guardian family dinner. You know, the kind of dinner that everyone would enjoy. Even the people you really, really don't like. It actually seemed very similar to Thanksgiving, but it was never properly named. But not only was Jinx absent, as usual, but there was only Ezreal, Soraka and Misfortune waiting outside their house. Syndra and Ari were nowhere to be found. Being mad and clearly in the middle of cooking dinner, as was evident by Lux still wearing one of her oven mitts, it was Lulu who cheerfully dragged the visitors inside. As they all walked in, Miss Fortune was texting on her phone, as real cheekily smirked at Lux, and Soraka gave her a present in the form of a box of Pantheon's pastries. Specifically, it was full of cinnamon rolls. The scene then fast forwards a couple of minutes and everyone is now in the living room. The three visitors occupied their couch, with Lulu sitting on the floor in front of them. She was folding a piece of paper into some kind of origami. Jenna and Poppy were sitting on the hard dining chairs from the other room, all while Lux was nervously walking around. Nothing but awkward silence and ticking clock echoed throughout the house. At this point only Ari, Syndra and Jinx were missing. After a while the silence was broken when Miss Fortune finally got off her phone and looked around for the first time. Her disappointed sigh indicated that she didn't like their modestly used interior. But it was Ezreal who really broke the awkwardness. He asked if they often got together like this. Slightly confused, Jenna said that yes, they do. And she was surprised when Ezreal confirmed that indeed their team didn't. Ari preferred to be out and about where people were. A little bit out of anger, Poppy asked if this is why Ari and Syndra didn't come. If perhaps they had better things to do. But Soraka jumped in to quickly change the subject. She asked about Jinx. Lux wanted to explain that Jinx is always late and she loves to make an entrance. But right as she said it, the front door slammed loudly and the Mayhem herself arrived together with Shiro and Kuro. Jinx was full of energy until she noticed that Ezreal was here too. He's the one person she wouldn't mind not being here. As Jinx stepped in, Lulu finished her paper project. It was a paper fortune teller, the one you open and close a number of times before it reveals some kind of mysterious fortune. Trying to go along with it, everyone picked their numbers. Lux went with 4, Jinx said 12, and Miss Fortune said 246 with her satisfied smirk. Lulu, being the nice and naive person she is, nodded and wrote down the number. She then came close to Soraka and started with her fortune telling. At this point, Miss Fortune's cockiness grew even bigger. Watching Lulu and Soraka, she sarcastically asked if they braid each other's hair too. To which Lux tried to answer no. But Poppy rushed to defend the unaware Lulu by saying sometimes. Jenna just nodded. After this, Miss Fortune rolled her eyes and picked up her phone again. Lux at least tried to get everyone to talk about serious matters. Like saving the universe. But Jinx wasn't having it. Instead, she got everyone to play truth or dare. As people do during slumber parties. But without hesitation, she turned to Ezreal and immediately asked whether or not he has romantic intentions towards Lux. Obviously not being prepared for such a question, Ezreal just opened his mouth without a word. Thankfully, Jenna came to the rescue by saying truth loudly, diffusing the rising energy in the room. Poppy confirmed that indeed the first person to volunteer goes first, and that Jinx's question would have to wait. Slightly disappointed, Jinx then turned to Jenna instead. She asked her if it is true that Jenna is older than Poppy's hammer. It took a second, but to everybody's surprise, the answer was false. The hammer was indeed older than Jenna herself. Now it was Jenna's turn to ask. She chose Soraka. Soraka was halfway through a cinnamon roll when all attention turned to her. 
Well, all but Lulu's. Lulu was opening and closing the fortune teller while counting under her breath. But even while doing so, she nudged Soraka with her elbow to let her know it is her turn to play. Snapping back to reality, Soraka chose truth. The question was, is it true that Soraka remembers the time when the first light was whole? Now, if you don't remember, the first light is the cosmic force that chooses Star Guardians as its champions. And Soraka nodded. It was true. Suddenly everyone was silently staring at her. And Soraka was confused when she realized that others couldn't remember those times. Even Jenna, who seemed by far the oldest of them, could only remember hazy memories. Then Poppy pushed Soraka into continuing the game. Now she had to pick a person to ask. Excited to be part of this game, Soraka chose Ezreal. And perhaps still a little bit shaken by Jinx's previous question, Ezreal went with Dare. So Soraka dared him to do the thing he does. You know, the thing that he does. I would understand if you didn't know what she's talking about, because it took her two takes to explain what she meant. She wanted Ezreal to do a special magic trick he does with Yuto, his companion. This magic trick would instantly teleport Ezreal from place to place using a portal that goes, you guessed it, through another dimension. But right before Ezreal could demonstrate this unusual skill, Lulu happily announced 246. And with it she stopped opening and closing the fortune teller. It was the number that would tell Soraka her fortune. As Lulu waved the fortune teller around, Ezreal decided to use it for his demonstration. He combined his form with Yuto's, giving him a pair of angelic wings. A second after that, he disappeared into a small portal and reappeared behind Lulu, plucking the fortune teller from her hand to demonstrate that he can bring items with him. Then Ezreal disappeared again, only to casually reappear back on the sofa. All of this happened within less than a second. He then unfolded the flap to read the fortune. It said, Opportunity can't knock if you don't build a door. But that wasn't Soraka's fortune, Lulu pointed out. It was the right flap, the one next to it. That one read, only in darkness can the light shine brightly. Lulu said that the first star told her that, which understandably, Miss Fortune didn't quite believe at first. Lulu then asked Ezreal, where did the portal go when he teleported like that? But Ezreal had no answer as he realized what had happened. Suddenly he struggled to keep a grip on the folded paper, and finally it managed to escape from his hands. The paper started folding and unfolding itself as if it had its own mind, until it turned into a black and green glowing creature. At that moment, everyone was on their feet. Even Jinx realized that Ezreal unintentionally brought a hitchhiking demon into Lux's living room using the portal. She found it cool. Ezreal then awkwardly looked at Lux and mouthed the word, sorry. Apparently this is something that already happened like 6 or 7 times to him. But it's totally not a big deal. He said as the creature jumped on the coffee table. Poppy was already mid-swing with her hammer. A loud crack and coffee table splinters filled the room. But the dark creature ran away. At this point everyone was trying to stop it. Jenna's wind began to rise. Jinx started loading her arsenal. But Miss Fortune had her gun already leveled at Lux's face. Out of fear, Ezreal stepped closer to push her guns off their mark, while Lux was counting the last seconds of her life. In her mind, dark thoughts rolled around. This was her plan all along. My Lux ran out. She is going to end me. Lux told herself. She wanted to say something, but she was interrupted by the sound of pulled trigger. There was a sharp pop like a balloon, and Lux's hands went up to cover her face, checking to see them if they are intact. A second later, the demon was gone, and fine bits of paper started to rain down on everyone, as the fortune teller exploded into confetti. It looked like it was snowing in the living room, and Lulu danced in it of course. It was but a moment of peace before everything was ruined again. Beeping alarm began to wail as a smoky haze crept throughout the house, coming from the kitchen. The scene then fast forwards into the kitchen, where their dinner was now charred ruins stuck to a metal baking sheet. Lux opened the window to let in the cool fall air, and the alarm finally shut off. Her eyes began to water as everything she prepared was now in ruins, although she kept telling everyone it was because of the smoke. Finally she let out a small pathetic wimp, saying that everything is ruined. She then heard shuffling of footsteps behind her, probably Jenna or Ezreal dealing with the smoke to offer some comfort. But when Lux turned around, it was misfortune. Well, that's definitely not edible, were her first words. Lux could do nothing but not do that. Miss Fortune's phone vibrated again, and Lux told herself it was probably Ari, telling her what all the cool kids are doing. But Miss Fortune didn't pick it up this time. Lux told her that she realizes that this probably isn't how Sarah wanted to spend her Friday night. And she apologized for everything being in ruins now. But instead of being disgusted by everything that happened, Miss Fortune told Lux to call her Sarah, which is something she did only to close friends. She also said that she came to apologize for what happened back there. Pointing her guns at someone's face probably isn't the nicest thing to do after all. She then continued apologizing for Ezreal making such a mess. And she asked if they could stay anyway. Soraka would be fine with her dinner being nothing but cinnamon rolls. And Ezreal already ordered pizzas as an apology. Lux, still wearing her oven mitt, raised her hand in surprise. 
She couldn't believe they wanted to stay anyway. But their conversation was interrupted by Lulu, who skipped clothes holding a stack of pastel fabrics. It was all the pajama onesies Lulu made for the party. Miss Fortune smiled. Indeed, this wasn't how she usually spends her Friday nights. But then again, she always wanted to see what Ezreal looks like with braided hair. Yes, in case you didn't realize, this entire story exists only to explain why the Star Guardians are wearing pajama onesies. And yes, technically everyone else got their pajamas too. Except for Ari and Syndra who were not present. So maybe they won't even get their pajama skins. Partially because maybe Ari already has too many things to wear. Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other league facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.